Good morning, I'm Gerard Strange from Branson <coughs> Strange and Jennings. Um, the opioid crisis is a true crisis, not just in name, but in actuality. It's devastating families here, not just in Upper East Tennessee, but throughout the United States. For many children, this is the rattle of their childhood. This is what they hear as babies. And that's unacceptable. The thing that we have to remember about this is in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s, this market for opioids for non-chronic pain, uh, non-cancer pain, did not exist. Through the actions of certain drug manufacturers, such as Purdue Pharmaceuticals, Mallinckrodt, and Endo Pharmaceuticals, they created a market that didn't exist. And that market is for opioids to be used for people that have non-cancerous, non-life-ending pain. And they did this by creating a fraudulent marketing campaign. And that campaign was to go out and convince the doctors and the public that their opioids were not addictive, that their opioids were not dangerous, that their opioids were not subject to abuse, and would not increase drug tolerance or cause withdrawal pains when it's removed. Despite the great weight of medical and scientific research over the last 50 years that found that opioids are addictive, that opioids are dangerous, that opioids <coughs> cause tolerance when used over time, and that when you're removed from them after a period of time that you will go through withdrawal, they push this fraudulent marketing campaign. We filed this complaint today. It's over 70 pages in length, and it goes through in detail a 20-year marketing campaign to convince the doctors and people of the United States and Upper East Tennessee that opioids are safe and should be regularly used and prescribed. As an example, in 1996, in an early press release as part of this <coughs> fraudulent campaign, Purdue proclaimed that the fear of addiction to opioids was exaggerated and largely unfounded. It should be noted they were later forced to admit in a federal criminal plea deal that these statements were false and that they knew they were false at the time they made them. Last week, the FDA asked Endo Pharmaceuticals to remove Opana ER from the market, finding and recommending because the risk of the drug to the public outweigh the benefits that people will receive from taking. Purdue started this campaign and was joined by others because by creating a market they could sell more of their pills into our communities. Purdue's promotion of OxyContin for non-cancer related pain was a smashing success. In 1997, Purdue had 670,000 prescriptions for OxyContin issued throughout the United States. By 2002, it was up to 6.2 million. That is millions of pills flooding our communities. Purdue based their marketing in part not just on the fact that OxyContin was less addictive, but one of the main reasons was that the pill would work for 12 hours. Even as they were releasing this pill to the market for the first time and engaging in this massive marketing campaign, they knew internally that the pill would not provide pain relief for up to 12 hours that people were having to take the pills closer and closer together over time, showing that they were building a tolerance to the pills. Despite this, Purdue pulled out all the stops. They used non-branded education. They used third parties and ghost wrote um, medical journal articles and other things to push the narrative that we don't do enough for pain, that we need to use opioids to treat non-cancer pain. They focused on encouraging physicians and primary care specialists to write pill prescriptions for these very dangerous, very addictive pills. Ultimately, in 2007, Purdue was forced to plead guilty to federal criminal felony charges for misrepresentation. <coughs> Purdue was also cited by the Food and Drug Administration for using false and misleading medical journal advertisements that violated the federal food drug and Cosmetic Act. Despite its guilty plea in the citation, Purdue Pharmaceuticals has continued to deceptively market opioids. So have the other pharmaceutical manufacturers, such as 
Malincrop, and Indo, as we detailed here in this complaint. In 2006, the year before their guilty plea, OxyContin sales were at $800 million. By 2010, OxyContin was yielding $3.1 billion a year. This has led to an entire generation of doctors being exposed to scientific <clears throat> facts about opioids, such as OxyContin, Roxycodone, and Opana ER, that were absolutely untrue and were made despite the defendants in this lawsuit knowing that their claims were false when they made them. To this day, Purdue publishes on an OxyContin website that it maintains for physicians to teach them how to use OxyContin, that OxyContin should be used in patients with chronic pain, even those who have a demonstrated history of substance abuse.